Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome back to Let's Play Civilization 6 where we're playing as Ludwig and we're trying to survive in a bit of a chaos domination game. Well, there's not so much domination as it is colonization because we've got beautiful open tracts of land over here. Well, I say open tracts of land. Realistically, that land is full of nonsense. Barbarian, barbarian nonsense. But... There is something to be said here. Um, I do think Anonymous Snake could use a little bit of help. So I'm going to use an internal trade route here to help that city out. I think that's a reasonable thing to do. We have got the bank here in Lucas. Uh, we have a couple of choices with how we want to proceed. We could go for an encampment, commercial hub, Hansa's. We could get the theater square in here. Honestly, I think this city is well suited to um, push for like military units to be sent to conquer the new world. So I think we got to start producing musketmen in here. Maybe, maybe, maybe it'd be better to build knights. Let me see, how close am I to cuirassiers? Honestly, maybe I should do a combination of field cannons and cuirassiers because I have, I have a lot of units hanging around. So I'm making six iron per turn, which is quite a lot of knights. Yeah, I think I'll, I think I'll go for knights for holding the new world. Let's have a look at that. Michael McAtee. Um, we definitely would like to build the campus in here. We'd also like to get the archaeological museum because we're not too far off picking up natural history. So let's get that archaeological museum. That'll be a 10 turn build time and that'll allow us to get this boosted. We are sitting on two envoys. I'm going to put an envoy into Taruga um, to get that little bit of a boost of science. There's four science per turn. And then we slowly want to be starting to build up our relationship with them. We do have a mine over here that we'd like to improve. So let's go ahead and improve that mine. When you hover over a city with a builder selected, you can see the blue tiles are tiles that are being worked that are unimproved. Um, so quite a useful little thing here when you have all my UI mods installed. And I totally recommend all of these UI mods. Um, I think they're fantastic. They really help out. So I think our main objective here with settling the new world is to get access to new luxuries. Uh, there's potentially, if we look at the... Um, oh, I guess there's probably a few things happening here, right? We've got scientific theory. There's going to be nationalism, so we can combine units together, which is exciting. Uh, Nobel Prize in physics, Christina won. We got a bronze, so we get a tech boost, which is nice. That's fine. If we take a look here, we've got Siberia. We've got South America. So that is actually 16 amenities potential right here. Let's start. Let's do a little scan. I'm going to go to the resource map mode. I'm going to deactivate everything except for luxuries. And I'm really looking for, like, here's T. So I want to secure that. There's truffles. Okay. Okay, there's actually not a lot of luxuries here, which is kind of interesting, but we would like to secure this T. So I'm thinking it would be nice to control this straight. So settling something like right here would be cool. One, two, three, and then maybe we'll settle on the rice. Well, if I settled here, I could eventually do a uh, canal. So maybe there's something to be said here. We settle here, we do a little canal. That's still in range of the T. We settle here. That controls this straight. I really want to know where there's more potential luxuries. We do have a couple of spice tiles up here, which is perfect. So we'd like to secure that. There's also a ton of tea up to the north that we'd love to secure. We also found Prezlat. This is very exciting. So in terms of ages, I think we'll just go for Heartbeat of Steam. These other ones aren't very good. Um, I've just, there's, there's not really much I can say other than they're just not very good. Now, we should be getting close to the time where retinues, in fact, urbanization here, retinues will no longer be useful. So that plus 10 amenities will be going away. Uh, one thing that we can do is try to purchase luxuries and we can get a couple. It's going to help bump, bump up the amenities. Let's go ahead and grab ballistics. We want the cuirassier. We also want industrialization, but I'm going to prioritize getting the cuirassier and then we'll go for industrialization. As much as I love the plus one production to mines, I think getting cuirassiers early will really make it a lot easier for clearing this because I'll have 74 combat sprint units once I actually build them as armies. Uh, taking a look at piping plover. We could build our fourth district in here. I'm going to focus on workshops. I think that little bit of production is really helpful. I'm going to go for Grants on Pingala for the 100% great people points. I'm going to save my... Ooh, now I like Buenos Aires. I'm going to save my envoys so I can get suzerainty of Buenos Aires. Luxury or a bonus resources behaving like luxuries, providing an amenity. That would be sick. Uh, let's make units cheaper with production because this would be very helpful for me. I'll, dub, I'll, I'll vote for that three times, I guess. The players usually choose this. I'll vote up the Nobel Prize. I'll vote up scientific city-states because that seems to be what the AI will go for. And then I would like to secure diplomatic victory points if we could. If we can't, you know, because the Diplo pivot is an option here. We did win that. We won this. And units are cheaper with gold. Okay, that's kind of interesting, actually, because we make decent gold. Uh, when it comes to diplomacy, we are at seven points, which isn't really enough to start considering a win. Um, but if we look, these knights are 400 gold. That's kind of sick, actually. Um, so I'll let that knight hard build, but I'm probably just going to start buying knights. Um, I'm just going to start putting gold into knights. 
I think that's a reasonable thing to do. We're getting more trade routes in here. Why don't you go for the workshop? We definitely need to find time to build our trade routes. Uh, we got the granary in Joe Wig and Ostigan, which means it's about time we can get our harbor. We would like to place a good campus here. I think there's a plus two campus. If we scooch this tile to the right city, we can go for a plus two campus. We probably won't build that campus because it's very expensive. Let's slowly build the harbor because they're half price and relatively cheap. Ooh, I think we would like to get the growth tiles online in this city because growth is king. Let's make sure we're working positive food because the more positive food we're working, the faster the city will grow, the faster the city will grow, the more production tiles it can work. So while um, growth lowers our production potential in the short term. It massively increases it in the long term, which is fantastic. Well, this is a huge continent. Um, there's silk. Would love to maybe settle here if we could make that work. That would get me silk and spices as well as whales. So we're mostly settling this for luxuries and stuff like that. Uh, getting a unit up into there will be an interesting adventure. Okay, you move here. Uh, let's go ahead and move you back. So we're going to start gathering up the units that I'm going to be sending to the front line. Uh, why don't you combine together to become a group? We will go ahead and gold purchase more knights. We want to spend all of that energy. Another cool thing we could do is buy heavy chariots because they could be upgraded relatively cheaply to the higher tiers uh, once we plug in the cheaper gold card. Uh, so this gold purchasing thing is actually an insanely good time for our empire because we pivoted towards gold as, as a resource. All right, let's go ahead and drop the fishing boat. That's going to allow the city to grow. Now we've got a huge surplus of food plus a slight positive amenity boost. Um, what, are we, what are we looking at food-wise here? Yeah. We got a 15% growth bonus. We got four growth per turn. So we should be seeing a pretty damn good result in here in terms of how quickly the city hits its high potential. Nice. You want to buy my Niter? I will happily sell you Niter. That's fine. Plus it'll allow me to explore your borders. We've got the workshop in Rudy. Um, there is something to be said for going for the shipyard. That's an eight gold shipyard. That's really damn good. There is also something to be said of a campus. Uh, maybe an entertainment complex in this area would be good. The problem is wherever I put it would be kind of awkward. But if I go by city overlap, there is a six city overlap right here. And that's a pretty good spot. There is an entertainment complex up here, but that only hits five cities. I think I don't mind the six city overlap. It's a good overlap. Yeah, let's do it. Let's slowly build up those amenities a little bit. Uh, you got me a trader. I'd like you to get me more traders because they're just based. Uh, the city of Blue, I, I think the city of Joe Wigan Ostigan could use a trader internally to help it out. Um, and so could Blue Hemp Hill. So why don't you move this way? I've got another knight coming. You're heading over here. Uh, you would like to combine with more heavy chariots because the more chariots I can pump out, the better. That's awesome. Sure, why don't you become a caravel as well? Oh, wow. Okay, so it looks like cotton is maybe the fourth resource on this island, um, which is exciting and interesting in equal measure. Now, we built the workshop in Jurek, which is going to give us a nice boost to our production, as well as our great engineer points. We have a holy site, but we're not particularly enamored with the need to get a holy site. Um, I guess technically we do have Taoism, which would give us access to stupas, um, but we really don't care about that so much. We don't care about spreading our religion. So the holy site is just a low impact district for us. I would argue something that might be a little bit better for us to get is the commercial hub to keep pumping up that gold. We also have the granary finished here in Anonymous Snake. This definitely feels like a city that could make use of a harbor. It really needs a build or two, um, but I'll go ahead and plop down the harbor here just to give the city something to do. Uh, you're going to go ahead and trade internally with Benjamin Saeev, which will be plus five production per turn, which is like, and it's like, it's, uh, it, it's all of your production. It's literally all of it. Uh, and then we'll use the final charge on this builder to place down a nice farm here. And we've got an amazing, amazing bread basket here. Okay, let's keep on a moving all our cavalry together. I think we're just waiting for cuirassiers and then we can start to like group these boys together. Let's go ahead. Uh, I can't quite afford another heavy chariot. So. It's going to be an exciting time getting all these knights going. Um, a few of them should be enough to take this. Uh, you're going to go ahead and do a little bit of exploring down southwest, southeast for me rather. But in the not too distant future, we will be preparing for the great settling here. Oh, wow. There's some crazy, crazy land. It's kind of exciting, actually. I do wish that barbarians gave more experience. I wish, I, I think the experience you get from barbarians like culls off way too early. We got the campus in the capital. Man, I would love to build a dam. Now I do believe that Hansa does get adjacency from dams. So there is like a thought here for me to go for the dam. It's a decent meta production, also prevents flooding on these tiles. And there are a lot of districts here that are vulnerable to flooding. So we're gonna go ahead and get that dam. We would like to be building things like the campus, but um, there are just more things that I wanna build than I can build. Um, and that is something I have to just make peace with. There's a limit to what my empire is capable of doing. We built a spy in Michael Frieda. Ideally, we would be stealing either gold. We got 700 gold from Lugdunum, 
400 from their Niani, we could steal 790 gold. Um, let's do it from Niani. We'll start stealing gold there. We definitely want more spies. All right, nice one. We've got a good bit of exploration done. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We just, this continent is like a wall. That's insane. So we're going to be able to control the pathway to the east and west, actually, if we continue along this pathway and if we can get these cities down. That's going to be an exciting and fun time. Taruga has been defeated, which is a little bit unfortunate because they were a scientific city state that were providing me with a bit of science. Wouldn't mind activating that. Let's go ahead and purchase diplomatic favor. I will buy your diplo favor. And then I will trigger this and I will actually vote for it too because I want people to go to war with Julius Caesar to slow him down because he's doing fine. And if they're investing in a war on each other, they're they're not, uh, they're not you know, winning the game, so to speak. Okay, so there's going to be a huge change. Oh, the Netherlands, they have already started the, to land on this new continent, which is kind of exciting and interesting. Let's do a fun thing. Um, wow, the list of players is actually so long I have to scroll it. We'll send a resident embassy. We'll get mutual open borders and then we will sell them our luxuries and then we'll buy any of their spare luxury resources they don't have any to sell so we should we should actually have a pretty good relationship with her how's my relationship with the maya doing um so the grievances have started to drain away my war crimes are starting to be forgotten which is good good for me i guess uh, maybe not the rest of the world this island is actually unoccupied and we could do a lot with this little snow island yeah the muskmen are going to be fun to deal with um yeah i'm going to vote this up we definitely want to try to clear it out. I hope other players agree with me that we should be at war with Julius Caesar. It looks like if we had a little bit more, we could have got Poundmaker and John Curtin to go to war. That would have been amazing. Unfortunately, we weren't able to force it through. We do now have Cuirassiers. I'm going to wait a turn before I do this upgrade because I should be able to do both. And then we got to wait for Iron here. And then four Cuirassiers should be a good start to the war in the east. Go ahead and keep exploring. Yeah, we got, ooh, potential builders to steal. We found another continent. So that's another four amenities here. Um, huge potential. Very, very exciting time of the game. You want to buy Romeo and Juliet? I don't want to sell it to you. I would actually prefer to buy my own great works of writing here to try to bump up my own culture. Okay, there's Scorched Earth. Let's have a little bit. We're going to drop Trade Confederation. Retainers is going the way of the Dodo as well. So we definitely want to have expropriation so we can start to produce settlers. Um, craftsmen would be sick. I'm going to put that instead of conscription. We would like to have cheaper unit upgrades because we do have a couple of units we'd like to upgrade. Triangular trade is amazing, but do we want it? Perhaps we would prefer to have invention to get a lot of great engineers. I think I prefer great engineers. And this will cause like a little bit of problems for my empire in terms of gold. Um, I'm going to take merchant confed. No, Machiavellianism, actually. I want to be more spy focused. It's a very strange build. We're going to have a lot of production. We're going to upgrade things with gold and uh, be able to produce settlers and get a lot of great engineer points. So this is going to be a very strange build for like most games that I'm in. I'm using cards that I normally wouldn't. Let's now go for colonialism because we want that plus one production from fishing boats. And then we would like uh, natural history as well to get those archaeologists. We're going to come in here. We're going to get two cuirassiers and then we're going to wait for, for iron for these guys. So we're going to wait a few more turns. Uh, we got ourselves an entertainment complex here. We're going to go ahead and build the arena because it's worth a few amenities. No one has any luxuries to sell me. I will sell my gypsum for nine gold. Let's see. Can we sell off any lux or any strategics rather? We can. We should need to be selling and pumping as much gold as possible. You built a trader. I'm going to put this trader into Bill Hemp Hill to help this city out. Cities are named after Patreons, by the way, or patrons. Uh, you're going to continue to build traders because that's your job. You're kind of a peripheral city, so you're not super important for us to keep going you managed to get the stable would be interesting to go for the armory in here to have a little bit of great general production as well as just general like like production production let's go for buenos aires this will go to level two with buenos aires this should give us a lot of amenities in our empire actually because buenos aires will now allow my bonus resources to behave like luxury resources providing one amenity per type which is pretty darn cool I'm not really sure how that actually works, but it should at least lead to me getting a few extra amenities, which I'm super on board with. We found another continent. Uh, looks like we managed to finish an archaeological museum because we just boosted natural history. We also just finished a spy here in the city of Dan. Um, we're mostly looking for gold steals. Um, I think I have some in Niani. I think I'm going to go to Lugdunum because there's a 500 gold steal there, which is pretty damn good. We can't build another spy. We could build settlers. Are there, is there another? We have a campus, we have a commercial, we have a Hansa. Those are what I would consider to be my three core districts. Do we need builders? We could probably use a couple of builders. However, I would also like to start getting my settlers out. So I'll start working on that. You got the archaeological museum, which is nice. Would love to get the campus in here, um, but also settler o'clock. I think it just is Settler O'Clock in the majority of my cities. I think any city that can produce a Settler in under 10 turns is 
the perfect candidate. We're going to put two envoys at Preslav to get control of them. Plus two error score, that's perfect. We also found even more city-states. The potential to settle here, this almost has like a kind of vaguely America-style shape. Like South America has been withered, like don't get me wrong, but like this is very clearly like Florida. And then this is like California, the little the little Baja California nub, you know what I mean? And then this is very clearly Alaska. There's kind of like a, an America going on here. Like this is Mexico. Florida is looking a little bit twisted. I'm not going to lie to you guys, okay? This is, maybe this is the Caribbean. But yeah, it's a, it's a very, very weird, weird and wacky little world. You go ahead and trade with a capital. It's five production in you to get you really pumping. Definitely need a builder over here with some tile purchases to get that city accelerated. Uh, and now we can go ahead and start moving these Corassier cores to the front line. Very nice. Okay, there's a snow island filled with barbarians here. It's kind of scary. Right, we finished the monument in Blue Hemp Hill. Uh, we would love to get the shipyard. Uh, realistically, though, we just need like a couple of builders in this city to chop out another district and continue to improve this terrain. All right, let's get these chariots into the water because they're going to be our reinforcements that are going to back up these Corassiers once they get upgraded to Corassiers themselves. Oh, wow, it looks like there's like... Maybe there's a Torres here or maybe there's just been like a bunch of forest fires that's been happening in the fog of war. All right, there's colonialism, which gives us fishing boats plus one production, as well as access to a few interesting cards like colonial taxes, which could be very, very cool since we are trying to set up a colonial empire here. All right, I need one more cuirass here. We'll make that happen later. Why don't you go ahead and build me a five turn settler? We're cranking out those settlers. Um, you built me a workshop. You could do a five turn settler too. Dude, we are just actually cranking settlers out. It's insane. I'm going to put two envoys into Muscat to get plus two amenities in cities with a commercial or plus one amenity in cities with a commercial hub, which is really nice. We're siphoning off a lot of amenities from these city-states. How's the exploration going here? Wow. There's like so much land for us to take. Okay, Niani. What we want to do is we want to gain sources in Niani and then siphon funds. That is the goal. You're continuing to explore the borders. Who is this? This is Kamai. He actually doesn't hate me, so he would be willing to do open borders, which would allow me to get better knowledge of his coastline. And so better knowledge of his coastline we shall. Um, a barb camp just got a little closer. I mean, I'll steal, I'll steal a builder. Wow, what's going on there? There's a settler that I can yoink up here to the north. That's actually super helpful. Uh, we managed to get an arena. This trader should prob. I should probably have an internal trader in Christina to whatever that city's called. We could also build the Venetian arsenal. Do you know what, man? This is a this is a colonial game. We're getting the Venetian arsenal. We just have to do it. We're also playing Ludwig, so it just it feels right to go for the Venetian arsenal. You know that German. German Venetian Arsenal. All right, let's see if we can get these Corassiers up on land um, and start doing something. So who is this? This is Egypt. Egypt hates me too much to get open borders. Once once you've been denounced by the AI, they typically won't give you open borders. We have met Caguana. We were not the first to meet Caguana, however. There's a ton of envoy missions going on. Mostly train cavalry, pike and shot, train a ranger. We can probably do some of these in our better producing cities. All right. The ice has not yet melted away, so we can't really navigate around these continents. There's our first settler popping out. Now, every time we build a settler, it will slow down the production of other settlers. I'm going to go ahead and build a pike and shot um, for the envoy. Seems like a reasonable thing for me to do. Um, we will continue to explore. We found the Matterhorn. Uh, it's kind of cool. That's an exciting thing. I want to get on land here. Go ahead and grab that tribal village. A sanitation boosted. But I'm going to wait to try and get on land because we've got this, uh, this amphibious attack penalty, which is not great. I mean, we'll take the attack because we should be able to break this guy next turn. We got the free builder, which is honestly just a moment to be able to improve all this silver and this honey, finally. Um, now, you were hunting down a settler. That's a free settler we could just send to the new world. And I would like you to trade with Lucas, which is what you're going to do. You're going to trade with Lucas. Um, that'll be a 60 turn. I hate that. But trade with Lucas for that four production per turn and the little bit of food will help you out too. Um, we definitely need more spies. We need more trade routes. Of course, there's a moderate flood. Like this thing hasn't flooded the entire game. There has to be like a piece of programming in the game that says one turn. It has to be. There's no way it's a coincidence. The flooding has to happen the turn before you're, you're completing a dam. There has someone at Firaxis is a troll. There's, there's literally no other way to explain it. I'm sorry. There's no way to explain it. It has to be a troll. It just, it cannot be that this is just a coincidence. I'm sorry. It's not possible for it to happen so consistently. Um, so I have someone in Lugdunum. I have someone in Niani. I think I'd like to steal from Maskatu as well. He's building the Crystal Red and Tor, which is kind of, you know, annoying and scary. Um, you're going to produce, well, you were producing traders, but I think one of my trade routes just got yeeted. So we'll have to get that repaired, which sucks. It'll take a couple turns. It'll be fine. Uh, spying in here, we want to gain sources so that we spy more efficiently. How have you not cleared this barb camp? I'm baffled. They've lost multiple settlers to it. I mean, I'm not going to complain. I'm getting free settlers out of it. All right, let's go to land. Uh, we can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most of these units. 
Um, but we can't go to toe to toe with a lot of line infantry. Uh, we will get promotions and stuff from these battles, um, but we do need to be careful about like you know keeping these 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 are the conquistadors. You know what I mean? These cuirassiers. Except we're probably going to do a little bit less, like more more friendly um, colonizing. Uh, okay, so we got factories. We got access to the power plant. We definitely want a few power plants and get access to coal. And the plus one production from mines is huge as well. We also have natural history, so we can get things like archaeologists. We would like a few archaeologists that would really help us out on the culture front. We don't want to change anything here. I think we're pretty happy with this government setup that we have. You could maybe argue that professional army is a bit redundant. We could replace that with like conscription for more gold per turn. But I do think that while I have these um, cuirassiers here, it's a thousand gold to upgrade them. Um, and then I will go ahead and purchase more heavy chariots while I have no iron because you can because uh, it's, it's much more gold efficient to when you have a 50% gold discount and you have a 50% gold upgrade discount it's way more efficient to buy units like it's insanely efficient that's why I'm not really building anything in fact I should cancel this pike and shot and just buy one when I have the gold in fact I can just I can just buy one now I just move this guy out of the city I come in here I buy the pike and shot boom envoy completed um, we should do the same for cavalry and rangers um, so we'll go ahead and research military science and rifling because we have uh, boosts for this and this. In terms of choosing a civic, it would be nice to go for conservation. I think we could get a couple of really cool national parks. It would help us with amenities too. Uh, we'd also be able to plant down forests and stuff like that and do some fun things. I think I would like to get opera and ballet for envoys. That would be really useful. Um, and then I'm probably just going to go ahead and research urbanization. When it comes to Yorick, let's get the markets. That's a plus eight gold market, by the way. That is insanely, insanely efficient market and it gives you a trade route. So it's just super powering my economy to build these things. Uh, Piping Clover, you managed to complete a settler. Seven turns for another one. Let's do it. We're slightly depopulating our empire to get settlers, but I think that's a worthwhile cause. And the city of Michael Mackety, you can get another settler for me. Thank you. And we've got three envoys in the bank. I think we take suzerainty of Caguana, Boosh, because again, this will allow us like by treating with the the you know, the, the city states that are here, we gain some interesting bonuses in terms of like their capabilities, but also we gain Diplo favor. We gain culture in all of our buildings. It's going to make our empire just that much more powerful. Uh, we discovered 13 sources of coal. What the fuck? Oh no, some of them are antiquity sites. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I was like, how did we discover 13 sources of coal? What the hell? Um, all right, let's attack here and then we'll kill. We also get the tribal village. That's beautiful. Both of these guys will promote. You're going to head down south. Good. No, don't declare war. That's not what we want to do. Because that would reveal all of our city states and they would start stealing them from us. We don't want them to know about what we got here. We got we got something good going. We got to keep it keep it to ourselves. We have found the world wrap, which is cool, but we haven't quite circumnavigated. Jump in the water. You move that way. You're stepping back to get promoted. Um, you're moving this way. We finished the dam in the capital, which means we also finished repairing in here. Um... I would like to get, it's a 17 gold bank, dude. 17 gold, that's a three production workshop, potentially a five production workshop. I think, man, it's hard to pass up these things, but the sheer capability of, like the sheer amount of settlers that we're gonna need to, to, to take the new world is kind of a fun and interesting challenge. So we're gonna focus on that. Let's continue to buy heavy chariots. And I'm buying heavy chariots in this city, by the way, because it actually has a stable. So these heavy chariots will get a slight boost to their, um, combat capabilities like in terms of their uh experience which is like it's not a huge bonus but it is a bonus uh not every bonus has to be like game breaking for it to be worth chasing down let's step forward to here and then take the barding promotion so you guys are good against range units and then you'll take the charge promotion so you're good against clearing the camp itself and then we should be able to take out these crossbows pretty easily we have another cuirassier coming to reinforce the galley is exploring the coast uh, we actually might be able to get a friendship with sunday Atakita, which is amazing uh, no, he's not quite ready for a friendship, but he is close. Like, we're, we're slowly building up that trust. Let's go ahead and buy some luxuries. Now some of our cities are starting to become happy. Our economy is boosting. Is anyone doing any sciencey stuff? Yeah, Wilfred Laurier has already started the space race. Listen, it's fine, okay? <laughs> he started the space race, dude. He's here. Oh, God. how He's making 300 science per turn. That's absurd. I don't care. Like, at this point, my objective in this game is not to win. Um, I'm beyond winning. I'm here to just have a good time. Okay, that's a lot of crossbows. We should be able to do work, though. Let's kill this crossbow. Kill this crossbow. Nice. Bring you forward. Um, you unlink. Well, I guess linking is fine. Can you shoot him? And then can you get this kill? There's a small... Oh, I misclicked. Whoops. It happens. Misclicks happen. Go over there to repair. We managed to get Nikola Tesla, actually. 
That's kind of interesting because if we put him in the right place, um, we can do some very interesting stuff. Let's repair that. I will buy one more chariot. Go ahead and get those whales online. We've a little bit of chopping and stuff to do here. We'll we'll get ourselves another builder. Has Mausoleum been built? Yeah, Mausoleum has been built. So you're going to go ahead and create this district. If we go city overlap, nine range. So where's my best Hansa? Here we go. This is an 11 city Hansa in the city of Dan. Let's do it there. And then we'll immediately get to work on a factory after the settler and we'll start getting really good regional production boosts. All right, let's go ahead and trade with Cahokia. That's 20 gold per turn. I definitely want gold for my trade routes now if I can get them. It's like some decent cash to be had there. You have established intelligence agency here. So let's go ahead and start siphoning funds. That's going to be a great way for us to fuel our economies by stealing money from the AI. And particularly if we're in a bit of a more conflict heavy game, being able to steal from the AI will really help us catch up. Wow. Why don't you kill there? You fortify. This first settler I'm probably going to try to get to this tile here. I think that's a reasonable thing to do. This trade route I'll put into the city of Rudy because I would like to start trading with Rome a little bit. And you doing some interesting things. What's going on here? Okay, nice. Um, The city of Adelaide actually flipped independent and they have free infantry. Free city infantry popping around out there. Jesus. All right, let's... You pop up here. You get that kill. Great. We're on the verge of greatness. One of these chariots can totally go join the front. Um, I don't remember what you're building. Probably good if you build builders, actually. This is this should be a builder production city. It's a great spot for it to be doing that. Um, this settler will actually go here, believe it or not. Um, eight turn settler is still within my budget. I think over 10 turns, I start reconsidering. Let's take back suzerainty of Zanzibar. I like those luxuries. That really helps us push up into that eight happy city range. Trade with Luxulum for 19 gold per turn, as well as a little bit of other resources. The The gold is really the big thing though. Um, let's con let's keep our cuirassiers pretty healthy here. We want to play, we want to play a little bit safe when it comes to, you know, setting up cities in the new, in the new lands. Okay, let's move you to there. You're providing a flanking bonuses you're going to move to here and then assault perfect and then you're going to climb up onto the shore one of these chariots needs to get into the water and become a cuirassier you're heading east you're jumping into the water and you're getting prepared to jump in the water you're prepared to jump in the water and you're prepared to jump in the water awesome the stream of settlers heading over here is just like really inspiring i kind of find it exciting and fun to, to settle this many cities. We got the market in Jorik. I do like the idea of the 17 gold per turn. That's kind of an exciting thing for nine turns of production. That's really good. We managed to get the armory in here. The sheer amount of production that we could get from a commercial hub would be disgusting. So there's something to be said for just plonking down a random ass commercial hub to get us a lot of gold. Uh, let's trade with Lutinum. I mean, that's crazy good. Although, do we want to trade internally? No, I think we, I think we just trade. For, we, we, we like that external gold route. Uh, you're going to go ahead and gain sources so that you operate two levels higher so you can perform the siphon funds mission with less risk. Wow, we found Nan Madal. That is huge. We were not the first to find it. Ramses is actually surprisingly uh, suzerain of that. But we really want to be suzerain of this. We're going to start siphoning funds. And this will start to fill our coffers like to an insane degree. It's going to be really, really fun to play around with the amount of money we'll steal from the AI. We are going to pop Nikola Tesla down here to make this, this industrial zone hit more cities. Now, I haven't even planned where all these cities are going, but I have a stream of settlers coming. But I'm pretty sure the return on investment from these cities should be really damn good. There's opera and ballet. We have access to the Bolshoi Theatre. Um, this should give us an extra couple of envoys, which we can plug into Nan Madal. This should massively boost. That was worth 30 culture per turn, by the way. Um, that's insane. So this city went free. We could take it. It's not a bad city. If we take a look at it, it's got aqueduct, it's got Hansa's potential for a harbor as well um we could totally take it i think we will it's worth error score too why not take a free city right we, we need a bigger empire to scale up um i definitely feel like we need to get our science up so let's get these universities i think we should prioritize that now in our capital another trade route is available here um would love to get the campuses so we're going to prioritize a little bit of science now our culture is looking really good which means we need to start working on our science our science is starting to fall behind um, honestly, this is just a great city for generating gold. So let's chop out that commercial hub. Boom. Oh shit, I had the wrong city selected. That's okay. Or rather the wrong city owned that coal tile. I mean, it's not the end of the world. I wish it hadn't been that way, but it is what it is. Like there's no point crying over spilt chops. So we got the settler in here. I think we want to work on the campus. We definitely want to keep increasing our science, especially because this is actually a fairly light science game. It's quite hard for us to get a lot of science. You're finally in position to become a city. 
you can attack here and then you can clear him and then you're going to step off that to heal and yes we're going to move this guy along the way now my curiosity here is can builders clear barb camps because if builders can clear barb camps this is going to be a very interesting maneuver i'm about to do there's military science that gives us access to cavalry and line infantry um, I don't have a courser hanging around, so we will probably be purchasing a cavalry. Let's do it here. 660 gold, that was worth an envoy. And we would also like to buy a ranger. That's the main reason that we're doing that, by the way, it's just for that. It looks like we lost Susan to Yekahokia. We would like that back eventually. Annoying. We'll put a little mine here. We will continue to build out farms. This is a very breadbasket-y area. This is like a ton of food up here, which is kind of exciting and fun. I don't know, I like it. It's neat. We definitely need to heal up these cuirassiers with a view of making our way down to clear out this barb camp. Although we could probably just purchase that tile to clear it. Then we just have to kill the barbs themselves. Um, let's have a look. Okay, it's going to be a little bit awkward to get up there. Um, let's have a look at the resources map mode. Do we have a decent city in the area? One, two, three. I mean, there's a good city here. It's nice and coastal, captures a bunch of land, makes use of this really good terrain. One, two, three, captures most of these tiles. I do think we'll settle on the maze. I like it as a play. It's an exciting and interesting play. And so that is what we shall do. Then, yeah, yeah, I'm quite happy with that setup. There might be another city like somewhere here, like in this little cove. One, two, three. Very densely settling this. It might be a little bit too dense. We could leave that blank. We don't have to take over every single little plot of land. It's not necessary. Uh, builder, let's test our theory. They can clear barb camps. That's kind of fun and exciting and hilarious. <laughs> we killed them with a, with a builder. So this barb camp is actually technically empty. Should be easy to deal with. With a builder, even. Now, don't you wish that I had the um, the free builder when you settle a city card? God, that would be amazing in this game right now. 828 gold. That's beautiful. We'll blast you into the water you get. Um, still waiting for 10 more iron for you to become a thingy. We can go ahead and settle this city. Boom. First settlement on Siberia. You can clear this guy out. And immediately, we get to work on the monument, the watermill, and the granary. Take a while for these to pay off, but they will pay off. Uh, we will want builders over here in the new world, so we'll be sending some builders out there. In addition to everything else, capital completed the library. Let's get to work on the university. No scientific city-states remain, which is kind of annoying. Rudy, looks like the Venetian arsenal was stolen from us, which is fine. We will now just get to work on a regular-ass shipyard. That is worth 12 gold per turn, by the way. That is an insanely good shipyard. Um, these trade routes are not particularly high quality. Twenty or thirteen gold per turn does not feel great. Misanabi to Cahokia. Okay, where the hell is Misanabi? Oh, it's this. Sure, we can set up a trade route here. In fact, we'll probably send a trade route from here to the capital. Let's do a little bit of tile purchasing in the city of Blue H Bill. Blue, I need to call this Blue Hemp Hill. Bill Hel Hemp Hill. Let's improve a mine. I just love the engaging turn-to-turn -turn action of a save game, man. It's just so satisfying to to play this game. The stream of settlers are arriving. And soon our colonies will be thriving. Let's start stealing gold here from Niani. That's going to be 730-ish gold per steal. It's exciting. You can go clear that, that tribal village too. Get a few of those little tribal villages under our belt. Oh, wow. Uh, a strange little quadrivery hanging out in the north. All right, we do a little chop here. And then we'll prepare for a chop there as well. That'll be the commercial hub out. That city will produce a lot of gold. And then we can go ahead and pop down this city. There's going to be some amazing chops going on in here too. We'll place that harbor. Even though it crushes a crab, I think that's worth it. We'll go for the monument and granary to slowly build the city up. This city really also needs a trader. I'm going to go ahead and gold purchase a trader and send it to the capital because we will get the most internal trade route production from that. And that really appeals to me. Christina might be my friend now. Aha, excellent. And perhaps Sundia Takita, you would be like to be a friend? No, but he will do a nice set of deals. So at long last, I'm no longer public enemy number one. I have two allies, which is a lot better than I had. Uh, not too long ago. When I say allies, I mean, I have two friends. All righty then. The next steps of my empire are probably to go for coal power and electricity. Something in that kind of a direction. Let's go for economics because the stock exchange could be a ton of cash for us. I mean, there's potentially, what, uh, 6, 12, 18 gold per stock exchange laying around for me. We'll go ahead and clear that barb camp, get this kill. Perfect. And then we'll steal this builder. I say steal when, you know. It's just there for the taking. Definitely have a shipyard in here now. That's 12 gold. We're going to go for the zoo to get that extra amenities. Try to keep those amenities nice and high. Speaking of amenities, we should be able to buy some. No, actually. Apparently not. We can't sell some, however. And we'll get a decent amount of cash for selling off all these amenities. That's really going to pump up our economy. Let's also sell off everything except for iron. Selling off coal, coal. Oh, yeah. 
finally were able this is why trading is so powerful this is why peaceful games are so like relatively powerful we're up to 454 gold per turn now let's do this cuirass here and i think i'm gonna buy some more cavalry like like cavalry cavalry you know so cavalry we'll have to wait until next turn to buy another one 11 turns on a settler feels like a little bit too long for my tastes so we're gonna stop doing that we're gonna go for the bank let's do a little chop here there's the commercial hub finished so the the sheer amount of cash that this city will generate will be amazing um, because it has two districts that produce gold which is fantastic it's already producing 19 gold per turn um at this stage of the game which is you know amazing you i want you to trade with benjamin saeed for that five production and a little bit of gold that's really gonna boost you along in the start oh wow he used a great merchant to steal this <laughs> a tribal village that i was going for <laughs> that's amazing um, I think we want to push north and start to get like settlements up here with our cuirass here. So let's begin that process. All right. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad I started that process now. All right. We'll pop you up here. Excellent. You will go there and yoink that. You're going to step here. You're going to combine together. We got a free builder. Uh, Nuremberg will uh, slowly develop. We've got a trader here in Galileo. Um, I'm curious if I can trade from Nuremberg to the capital. And that would be kind of an interesting trade route. Uh, speaking of Galileo, I think your job is just to continue to produce traders because there's nothing really else I can do in that city that would really help out my empire that much. Ooh, there is a little barb camp that we didn't know existed. This is where some field cannons might actually be really useful here. So let's start moving some field cannons to the to the to the front line actually. Um, upgrade you to a field cannon. Upgrade you to a field cannon. You can start moving. And you can start moving. While the field cannons are a little bit slower. Um, there are scenarios where the other units, the fact that they do damage without taking damage gives them a big advantage when we're fighting in these areas. So that's kind of like the logic behind what we're doing. You know, there is something to be said for going for a preserve in this city. If I set up a preserve here, okay, hear me out. And I set up a whole bunch of woods around it. There is something to be said. And so it's what we're going to do. But we'll probably build like the shipyard and the bank first to keep the city's gold income going. Um, so that it can justify its own expenditures and stuff like that. And we will probably chop to speed up the preserve. Yeah, this is honestly, this is like my ideal game of save. It's where I've just decided that I don't care about winning and I'm just going to do whatever I feel like doing. And right now I just feel like settling like infinite cities. <laughs> it's like the perfect game of save, man. No, like victory is irrelevant. I just do whatever I feel like doing. Um, which is honestly how I live the majority of my life. Basically just... Every single day I wake up and I'm like, what do I want to do? And uh, then I do that thing. Now, typically they're fairly responsible things like, you know, making dinner, cooking food, uh, you know, spending time with my friends, talking to people, doing lots sort of stuff. We are going to continue to steal gold. But I do live a very free life. That is that is the one big thing that YouTube has given me is that I have very few, like, like if I want to wake up an hour later, I can. You know what I mean? There's very few things in my life that are externally rigid. Um, whereas I, you know, most people live at a very externally rigid life, which, you know, some people like that kind of structure. For me, I really like the free flowing nature of, of, of the YouTube job. I love it. Okay, we're going to go ahead and place a little city here. I mean, obviously, I'm not like completely on, I'm not completely rogue, you know what I mean? But I, but I live a fairly, you know, free form life where I, I get to choose what I do every day. And that's a, that's a beautiful thing. And I would not give it up for anything. Like I said, I, I would work this job for minimum wage, dude. Uh, let's go ahead and get conservation. There's three envoys. You we'll remove this improvement and we will go for the bank of the shipyard i think we'll go shipyard first that's worth production i think now is a good time for us to plug in the veterancy card we've been kind of waiting to plug that in for a very long time that's going to be a 30 percent production boost towards a lot of these things there is some, something to be said for settling on this silk let's have a look at the resource map mode um we're looking for the cotton let me count here right we've got tea is one spices is two cotton is three silk is four so I just need to find a city with cotton, which is actually fine up here. I think there's like a city on this right there. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then maybe on like this T tile, we'll like settle a city. Um, and I think that is most of the cities that we want in this continent, like secured. So I'll start moving a couple of settlers up here to try and at least get this city online. And then we can start thinking about the next continent. Right. Okay. We'll move you to there. We're going to go ahead and combine you guys together. Move the field cannon into here. You step up. Can you make it to the city? You can't quite make it to the city. That's all right. You move to here. You form a core and then become a field cannon. Internal trade route we don't care about. We're more about those externals. Lovely gold income. So you cannot quite trade with the 
capital zone. But if we get a trading post into anonymous snake, that would make potentially trading with the capital way easier. Let's go ahead and settle you as well. The city of Cologne could use a trader. Can't quite afford to get one in here. Um, we will go ahead and place the harbor. It's very clearly a harbor city. And I'd like to put an encampment here because I think that's kind of a cute idea to have um, like, a, like a fortress straight. Like this is like the South America Gibraltar. You know what I mean? Okay, this poor Corassier is taking a lot of damage, but he can move one tile to the left and then promote with the barding promotion. And then you can promote one, move to one tile to the left and you can move. And then next turn, we should be able to make a good sweeping attack. I'll even put my, well, I don't know if I want to put my galley there, but I'll even move this guy down to support. We got the university in the capital. Would love, there's a seven turn settler. We'll grab that, that's good. Um, we're continuously sending builders to the, um, to the new world as well to help develop it. We got the campus over here in Michael McAtee. Let's grab another library. We definitely need to keep pumping up the science. You're gonna become a field candidate. It's quite expensive, but uh, you will help us out in our quest in the new world. You're gonna go ahead and chop. Actually, I think I'm okay with having these mines be here for a little while while we build up the shipyard and stuff. And then we'll, we'll switch over to conservation based adhesives. No, conservation. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching too much of Baumgartner re Restoration. Um, we'll switch over to conservation for uh, when we were building that preserve. All right, I think goal number one is to get rid of this field cannon, which mission accomplished. And then goal number two is to get rid of the line infantry and then continue to push these units north. I think I might settle that silk. Um, I've got two settlers heading north to grab these two areas. And then I've got another settler that I would like to head north as well. We managed to get rifling. Did I actually end up buying? I have not bought the ranger. So I'll just quickly do that. Should be fairly cheap. Yeah, 700 gold. Way cheaper than usual. I think units are still half price for purchasing. Yep. Um, and we're going to be heading into a new era soon. We've got a ton of envoys. Suzerainty wise, the Vatican City we don't care too much about. I think we're pretty happy with how we're set up here. I think I'll just go one level in Zanzibar just to get that up. And then otherwise, we're just going to hold. Hold as we are. Okay, we could go for sanitation. I think the next step, I think it would be good for us to unlock oil. But we should probably go for that after we build a coal power plant. And similarly, like, we should probably get an ironclad at some point. So let's go ahead and unlock ironclad. But we should really get two shipyards before we do that. And we are about to finish a shipyard here, which I think would be my second one. I can't tell. Yeah, it would be my second one. All right, another settler in Michael Frieda. 11 turn settler. I think 11 turns is like an acceptable amount, but I would prefer to focus on getting that stock exchange. That's a potential. What is that? Like a seven gold in power? That's ridiculous. Uh, it's 17 gold. It's not as good as a bank and it's quite a bit more expensive. Just get me those settlers. A settling the new world is going to be exciting and fun for like the foreseeable future. The first field cannons are launching into the ocean. I think I'm going to start bringing up uh, a new gang of field cannon potential. We no longer need them to fog bust. Oh, you got your first district so you could finally do this. I would like to get you a water park too. That'd be kind of fun and exciting. Um, but you should definitely get the lighthouse first. Are you trading internally? You are trading internally, which is fantastic. Escape on foot. Captured in Niani. That's fine. He did steal a thousand gold. So as long as it's cheaper than a thousand gold to get him released. Uh, he wants to denounce me for spying on him. So he won't talk to me. And I'll be like, I can't promise I'll stop spying on you. Um, but we will make a deal. He says he's not willing to trade it, but he totally is. So 40 times 30 is 1,200 gold. That's a lot of gold. Which means he basically stole maybe 31, 32 gold. So 32 times 30 is 960 gold. So if we buy this guy back, we technically profit like very, very slightly. Um, and then we'll just immediately put him back in Niani to do the same thing. It's like, hey, wait a minute. Were you in prison a few minutes ago? <laughs> oh man. Uh, known to the local police. Carrying bags of gold out of the local commercial hub. This skirmish is a small problem. Uh, looks like another city has flipped to me. Uh, we got the city of Adelaide. This is going to be a city I'm not going to try to hold though. Cause well, it's got good culture. It's got insane culture. Oh my god. Yeah, we definitely keep this. Uh, we grab, I don't know, Amani. Plug her into Adelaide. Boom. What the heck? The city's making 32 culture per turn. That's absurd. Did I just get a bunch of great works? Oh my god, I did. Speaking of great works, actually, I should totally come in here and I should, I, I, I should have done this a long time ago. I just totally forgot. I should have been buying great works of writing because the amount of culture you get from them is actually really nice. Plus the small smidge of tourism can potentially lead to a tourism victory. So I'm just going to buy all the great works. Now up to 27 culture. That was a boost of like 12 culture per term, which is not insignificant. You totally need a granary. You need to grow. You also just need food. You need a, you need a district too. You need like a harbor. Um, 
you got you got issues. I'm going to say focus on food because if we can get you to grow, we could do a lot of work with you. This city's going to be hard to hold loyalty wise unless we can get a golden age, and we might not get a golden age. Let's grab the university. That's another plus four science return. Science is a little bit of a struggle for us. Um, Wilfred Laurier is stage two of his moon landing. We got the bank here in Yorick. We don't need the factory. 16 turn settler isn't great. Um, but what else am I going to do with this city? I could build a campus. There's a plus two campus. There's a few plus two campuses. I think we only really need the plus one. I mean, the plus one is fine. It does the job. Grab that plus one campus there. Slowly increase our science. Looking at the city of Bill Hemphill. I do think we should make the bank, but I would like to start the preserve, especially because I can chop it out. Just a bit, a bit odd for us to do, for sure. I'm fully willing to admit that, to chop out a preserve because you want to keep the forest, right? It's like, you know, but I think the preserve will make the city actually grow and useful in a very interesting way. I also really need to build my archaeologists. Um, we'll chop here in the capital. That'll be a settler slightly done faster. I kind of said my sentence backwards there, like I was Yoda. Slightly done faster. Hmm? Can you get that kill for me? Thank you. Settler on the silk. All right, fishing boat on the whales. That's going to make the city way more useful. Uh, Nobel Peace Prize is kind of interesting. We'll take that. Now, the Nobel Peace Prize is for generating great people points, I think. I don't know. Or generating Diplo favor. I don't care about winning this. I think it would be cool if Heavy Cavalry got the combat strength. That would be nice. And it would be cool if, I don't know, uh, whales gave extra luxuries. I don't, you know. The rest of these, I just, I don't think the the Congress is that impactful, honestly. So Olives grant luxuries. Heavy Cavalry did win. Wilhelmina won the Diplo favor and Nobel Peace Prize did pass. We came, uh, or rather, we should do pretty well on the Nobel Peace Prize. John Rockefeller here. That's great, actually. Three oil and trade routes uh, are slightly better. It's fantastic. So upgrading this chariot costs a thousand gold. That's uh, expensive as heck. Um, but we will do it. All right, uh, colonist here on the silk. Perfect. You guys can heal up. When did you get into that city? You're going to step up onto the shore. Excellent. That means it's safe for you to step up and you're making your way up to this city. Uh, you should be able to make your way up here to two as well. Oh, wow. That's an old barb camp because it's got a spearman in it, which is what it means. It probably spawned very early on into the game. Get a harbor there. It seems pretty natural to grab a harbor in my mind. Now, can you imagine I was playing Spain and I had the the... Ancestral Hall or whatever it's called that gives you double like gives you builders and then I would be settling on an opposite continent and getting double Come on, man. No military emergencies. Estergom? I captured that like five centuries ago. Oh, th I, th I captured that ten centuries ago. I captured that like Hungary declared war on me, dude. There's no way that that's a reasonable um, request. We will go for the coal power plant. Uh, we will upgrade you to a Corassier because we just need a few more units to control the new world. Um, and then we need to start looking to start, you know, occupying not only because we've got this continent here Siberia we've almost got all the luxuries from that we want to get all the luxuries from Asia America and we also want to get all the luxuries from South America so we are we got big moments coming um, very very cool episode though and I'm kind of excited to see what happens in the next one I want to thank you guys very much for watching I love you all very much and I'll see you guys next time bye bye